Hello, my friends, Lindsay House and Robin Sachs here with you once again, and we are walking you through the ABCs of success for 2022. We have throughout all of this year popped onto your LinkedIn live every couple of weeks, and we've just walked through the alphabet letter by letter. And today we are on W. We, oh my goodness, we only have a few of these left. This is amazing. It is amazing. We're really doing this. We're really going to finish before 2023. Yay! <laughs> and then oh, something new. We got to get <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's jump right in because we actually have a handful of things today that we could talk about. We just got on a couple minutes ago, literally, and we're like, what are your W's? And we both had a whole bunch of them and they were all really good ones, I think. So, you know, want to start with one that might seem a little out of the box. Mm -hmm. But it's something that we can both speak to in a couple of different ways. And it is where what makes you feel comfortable and good. Mm -hmm. And yeah. yet, Lindsay, I'm going to toss it right over to you. When I say that, what, what, why is that important? So I think this is going to be fun and why I'm excited to kick off with it is because when we were even talking previously, I feel like you already went a little different angle with it then. And it's because of our spaces that we come from. So I don't know how often I talk about this, but I had 13 years in surgical weight loss at an outpatient clinic, which would just really like, I loved the outpatient. And what I noticed as, as people had extreme weight loss, they would stay in a clothing size for way longer than they should because a it's expensive to to get out of it and then so it actually like became such a passion of mine one of the patients and i started this little business called trendy transitions because we felt like it was so important to walk out the door in something that makes you feel good what you're wearing for the day it sets the whole tone. Like if you walk out the door and your pants are about to fall off or if you're baggy, saggy, like there's nothing about that that makes us pick our head up and feel confident and move forward with that. And I think that a lot of people are guilty. Like I'm going the weight loss direction with it, but this could be all directions. Like what if we're gaining a little bit of weight? What if we're on a medicine that's making us gain and we're trying to squeeze into an outfit that makes us like all we can think about all day is how uncomfortable it is that our buttons feel like they're going to pop that it can consume our brain when we don't feel good in what we're wearing and it can do the exact opposite it can release that thought when we feel comfortable in our outfit when we feel confident when we feel proud you know like and it doesn't have to be i think people get really caught up in designer or that it needs to cost. I don't know. I just, it does, it's not about that. And this is where I love where you're about to go with it, Robin. Like people feel like they need to come in business attire or to, to be their best. So I'm going to flip it right back over to you. But my big, my summary with what I'm saying is that I don't care what phase of where you are with your body that you're in to help you love your body or even like your body, you better start wearing some stuff that actually you feel good in don't wait for the end. Don't wait till you lose the 20 pounds, 100 pounds. Now do it today. Like purchase something that makes you feel good. That was way longer than I meant it to be. No, I, I love that. And I love that you brought up Trendy. What's the name of the business? Trendy Transitions. <laughs> that's brilliant. Something, again, something so simple that's so powerful. I, I love that. Little thing that can make a huge impact. And the, the I'll, I'll come from a slightly different place from this. As someone who has worked at home for years, mm -hmm. you know, I, and, and pre-pandemic, you heard this all the time as more people were just working from home or working remotely a bit more and that kind of thing. And I think there has been a little bit of a shift now um, on the other side here where we are now. But, you know, if I had a dime for every time I heard somebody say, Ooh, get up every morning when you work at home and make sure you dress like you're going into the office, put that suit on, put that, that nice pantsuit on the, whatever it is, you have got to feel that part. And I would always kind of laugh out loud <laughs> because it, it always <laughs> struck me as, as funny because it's one of those things that as a confidence coach, similar to what you were talking about with you have got to feel good. If you want to feel powerful, if you want to feel confident, if you got to, I know clothes make the man, but I want to turn that on its head. We all have things that when we put them on, we feel certain ways. Yeah. 
And if you are in a place where you've got to get a lot of work done that day and you need to feel comfortable, you know what? Throw on whatever you need for a Zoom call, right? That top, then throw that t-shirt back on, have your pajama bottoms back on and be comfortable because when you feel comfortable, you're going to get done what you want. Um, you know, I never, ever dressed for anything when I was working at home that was business oriented. If I needed to do a lot of stuff and wanted to be super productive, I would throw on my yoga pants and a t-shirt because my brain knew when, when my workout clothes went on, that threw me into, we're going to work out. We're going to move. We're going to get going. We're going to get some good positive juices flowing. And so really just start to think about, you know, it doesn't mean you have to look like a slob all the time. It doesn't mean you have to dress to the nines. What it means is understand that what you wear, whether it's comfortable shoes, whether it's a, a, a shirt that's too small or too big, too tight or too loose, whatever it is, find yourself the things that make you feel in the ways that you can tap into that because then you can use those clothes as a tool. When I need to feel productive, I know this is my go-to outfit. When mm -hmm. I need to feel confident, here's a go-to outfit. When I want to feel comfortable or need to be whatever, here's a go-to thing I can put on and give yourself permission to do that. So again, I know that we've kind of switched a lot. We've shifted a bit from if we talked about this a few years ago, but yeah. it, it's still prevalent. What you're wearing at any given moment absolutely makes you feel things. So use that to your advantage. I know. I love this. I actually have one more to add on to this, Robin. We <laughs> we won't take our whole session. We promise with this, but this is a constant conversation I'm having with clients too. Start your day, wear something that will motivate you to take that next right step. So like if you do work from home and you do have the ability to live in workout outfits to have that and your tennis shoes already on, you're going to be so much more likely to take that 10 minute break and go walk around the block than if you have slippers on. Sometimes it's the dumbest things where it's like, no, I'd have to go find shoes that all of a sudden stop, stop our good habit that was about to happen. So I, this is also something funny, but like I'll sleep in a sports bra because if it's chilly in my room and I'm trying to get up and go work out and I have to like go change, <laughs> if I sleep, <laughs> in sports, that, yes. sleep, in, yeah, sleep in the workout outfit, then all I do is roll out of bed and put the tennis shoes on. Like dumb little barriers that all of a sudden are the make or break of us doing the next right thing. So, okay, yeah. now I'll really put the wear to bed, but. But yeah, set yourself up for the outcome you want and just yeah. do it. Yeah. And, and guess what? You'll be amazed how more off, how much more often you do it. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. All right. So, you know, I'm going to throw one back to you because it, this is actually kind of a feeling or it's, it's maybe a transition. Maybe it's not a transition, but it's a word that you hear constantly. And there's a couple different takes on this word, willpower. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little I, bit about willpower. I really want to talk about this because I feel like my view on willpower has shifted over my years of working. And my initial was like, I hated the word willpower. I felt like it's not about willpower. That's kind of just this like thing that people feel like they have, don't have. And we need to get over thinking it's about willpower, which I agree that like our habits, we need to like quit blaming willpower. But what, where I want to go with this is willpower is real. And the more that I've like researched it and studied it, but the thing that I didn't ever really understand is that we have like this, it's a resource and it's a limited resource. So have you ever noticed that when you're fresh and maybe you've eaten breakfast and you've got that cup of coffee in your hand and you're looking at the donut, it's so easy to like say, I don't want the donut because you have energy because you're in a good spot in your day. And then have you ever noticed as the day went on, a coworker disturbed you, you're getting sleepy because you didn't sleep well the night before and ripple, ripple of all the life events that can happen, that all of a sudden the donut, you can't, you can no longer say no to it. And you're like, my willpower stinks. Willpower is related, connected to energy. Is, so I'd rather people use the word energy than willpower because willpower feels defeating or it feels like it's our fault, where energy is less about being our fault. It's just that it's a limited resource. We only have so much energy to disperse in different places throughout the day. So 
really pay attention. If you feel like you're struggling with emotional eating, if you feel like you're struggling with habits, where is your energy level? Are you constantly depleted? Are you constantly not really refilling on your energy? And I guarantee that is your spot that you need to start for like positive ripples into, into your health habits. What about you, Robin? What, what's the word willpower bring up? <laughs> You know, I, I like, I like what you just said, where it's, Hey, if I, if I, I, something I feel I either have, or I don't have. And as soon as I feel I don't have it, it's defeating. That's the perfect word for it. And so, you know, to replace that word with something like energy, I love that the, with willpower, willpower to me is in the same space as motivation. Mm. And for me, you know, motivation people are always waiting for motivation to come along. When I get motivated again, right? I'm not motivated, so I don't do it. Motivation isn't your, most people use motivation wrong. And I think that's the same thing with willpower. And if you think about it a little differently, to me, both of those kind of fall into that place where motivation and willpower are the, the beginning. They're that moment where you go, yes, here's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to get excited about it. And here's what I'm going to do. But the moment those initial sparks happen, their job is over. And if you start to rely on motivation or willpower beyond that, yeah, it's not there. That's not what that tool is for. And the, the analogy, I that's when habits need to kick in. Okay, so what are you going to do? Go do. What's the action you're going to go do? Because you, you'll never willpower or motivate yourself into action. But when you go take action, you get more motivation and willpower. So it's, I think a lot of us do it very much backwards. Mm -hmm. And the way that I think about those type of words is it's like, you know, the key, the ignition to your car, you know, whether you, you put the key in or you push the button or whatever, you turn it, there's that initial spark that starts everything. But the moment that spark is done, its job is over. There's literally nothing you can do. Now you've got to put the car in gear. Now you've got to figure out where you're going. Now you've got to hit the accelerator. You got to hit the brake. You got to turn the wheel, go in different direction, right? You, you've got to do a bunch of other things. So it's interesting to think about those words as here's, you, you need these things, but they do one thing. Please don't expect them to do four things because I think that's where it's really easy to, to kind of fall off the cliff, so to speak, with that really quickly and then blame those things. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I love where you took that. And I thought you were going to say with the car too, like the gasoline aspect of it, like the spark happened, it's but the then energy. what's your, what's your fuel? What keeps you on track? You know, so for, again, for us, what is that? Like once the sparks happened, what's your fuel? Right. What, and there's I, that energy piece. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And you know what I, with saying that there's two things, you know, I worked with a client years ago who never used the word willpower. She always said it's want power mm. that put her a little more in control. Yeah. And I thought that's a, that's a cool way to look at that, to shift that word a little bit. And it made her have control because it, if there was a day where I don't want this, give yourself permission not to do it. Yeah. And tomorrow, this is what I want. Well, then you better start consistently stringing some of these days together to get what you want. Right. Mm, that's good. Yeah. And so just an interesting take on it. Um, but it does need to come with the permission piece because I feel like it goes yeah. back to the want power goes, well, if I want it, why aren't I doing it? Right. And then we get you up know? here and then mm -hmm. it's back <laughs> in our head. Yes. <laughs> All right. uh, OK, Robin, I want to hear what you have to say about what. <laughs> and I think this is another transition kind of from th these are all a little interconnected. To they that. are. They totally are. You know, I, what if are probably the two most dangerous defeating words, I think, from a a confidence standpoint, from a go do something. I want to make a change. I want to make a shift. Um, what immediately stops us in our tracks is the what if. And of course, what do we do? We don't, what if all the great things that could happen? We, what if all the, what if it doesn't work? What if I don't get the job? What if they don't like what I say? What if, you know, they don't care for, to do what I'm asking them to do? It's always the negatives. And here's the key with what if. I don't care if it's a negative because sometimes those are realistic things to ask. What if I don't get the job? Yeah. What if this falls through, right? What if this doesn't go the way I planned it? You have yeah. got to be thinking of those things. However, here's the key with what if. We often ask the question and we never answer it. And so what happens is it snowballs 
And if you ask one what if question, what tends to happen is you ask another and another and another, and you build up this really negative feeling spiral where, oh my goodness, forget it. Everything can go wrong. Too much can go wrong. If you just take the time to any time you catch yourself what ifing, which is which is perfectly fine, answer the question, right? What if this doesn't go through? Well, then these are the steps we take to redo it and resubmit it. Right? What if I don't get the job? Well, then I keep looking and I get the I get another one. Right? What if what if they don't like my recommendation? Well, then maybe I ask for some feedback and maybe make some tweaks. Yeah. Right? And, when we answer the question, it doesn't create a sense of being overwhelmed. And that overwhelm happens when we keep what ifing but don't answer it because we convince ourselves really quickly that there's only bad possibilities. The other thing with what if is just ask yourself the opposite question. What if it doesn't work? What if it does? Yeah. Yes. What if, so I don't get good. The job? What if you do? I yeah. mean, again, give yourself a chance to see that there are things that actually work for you, not just things that might not work for you. And there's that balance again, right? It's not about being Pollyanna and, and saying everything is with rose colored glasses and everything's fine. That's as unrealistic as going the other way and saying everything is awful and it's never going to work. Right. So the answer is in that middle. And to be in the middle, you have got to give yourself both sides. What if it doesn't work? What if it does? Okay, I don't have that answer yet. So I'm not going to keep thinking about it. I might play out the scenarios. If it works, here's what we're going to do. If it doesn't work, here's what we're going to do. Now I feel a little better and prepared and I'm not spiraling. So that's yeah. where that's where that takes me. How about you, Lindsay? Oh, I love that. I think you already knocked it out of the ballpark. I was just going to throw in a quick little example with it. I love the answering your own question part. Robin and I, if you can sit back and hear this, like these are tools, not just for yourself. They're for your family. They're for your kids. They're for a, a friend. They're for all the eyeballs that are watching you and how you handle a situation. And my example was, <laughs> I was in the car with my daughter taking her to school yesterday. My husband and I are leaving for the next couple of days because it's my birthday. When's your birthday, Robin? Uh, October, early October. Yeah, happy birthday. Well, thank you. It's not till the 4th, but okay. we were like, the weekends are so hard to get away. So we're going to get away on a Thursday, Friday. Yay. But she's a little, she can get a little homesick, you know? And so like the what ifs really start coming. What if I, you know, panic during this time or I don't make it through the night or blah, blah. And we were doing by accident, the answering of the questions. Well, then mm -hmm. your backup plan is this. And then your backup plan is that. And it's empowering. If you know your answer to your what if, even if you never have to use it, it calms you. You're like, okay, okay. I know what that, what would that would look like? So thank you. So you said answer your own question and then flip the question, flip the what if, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That might so. be one of the, one of the little homeworks we have is start to pay attention to yeah. when you or when someone else, what ifs and yeah. put this tool into play and try it. You'll be amazed, truly amazed at how quickly you can shift either for yourself or someone else the the oh no oh no oh no to an oh all right that's we got this yeah and, and that's just that makes a world of difference it's empowering right it's like mm -hmm. it is it's a game changer oh, and so. again talk about you know bringing your stress level down and bringing your mm -hmm. confidence up that's mm -hmm. one way that you do that you answer the questions you don't just spiral with questions yeah. right ah so good yes all right so there's there's one here that my answer is very short to it it's just stop doing it <laughs> Excuse me. And that's whining. Excuse me. <laughs> my thing. thought I knew at some point would take over today. But whining. So my take on it is, please just stop doing it. Go do what you need to do. Take care of it. Do whatever. I'm going to throw it right back to you. <laughs> oh, okay. I love that, Robin. <laughs> if, if only it were that easy, right? And exactly. I exactly. So bad that you don't feel good right now. I want to give you a hug. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, all right. My answer to whining or my thought around whining is yeah. really putting ourselves in a mental space of have to or get to. Because mm. I think that a lot of us whine about, I don't want to take that out of my diet. Like, don't you dare tell me to stop drinking Diet Coke was one of the things that people used to walk in and tell me. Or... <laughs> you know, or whining about the movement that they have to do that day in order to hit their 10,000 steps or, and there's just been so many moments. And I do this with my kids too. I'm just like, what if, what if we flip it to, 
like my body actually works and I get to take this walk today. Like, holy cow, have you ever had movement be taken away from you? Have you ever been seriously injured, Robin? Yeah. Yeah. I had when I broke my ankle and it was just mad. Actually, quick, funny aside story. I had to have the cast redone three times because I wasn't very good. And I was hosting a major softball tournament for the company that I worked for at the time. Yeah. And I decided I was going to play even with the cast. So three times that weekend, I had to go back and because it was all dirty and gross. Oh, and I'm not the best patient. So <laughs> apparently <laughs> but yeah, in, in being in the cast, other than that, which wasn't the smartest thing I've ever done for many reasons. Um, yeah, it's when you're limited that way or, or hurting or there's pain or something, you don't yeah. realize when that ability goes away, it, it's devastating. And you it feel you're so different. And it's like, if we could almost all bring ourselves to that, if we've had that moment in our life, or I love your example of feeling sick too. Um, there's a definite, like, I, if I could only get back to my normal me, because there's so many times that we beat up our normal me that the second we're not in ourself, then it's like, if I could just get back to that, I'd be happy. Um, and if food's ever taken away from you, like when we traveled to, to Europe, we just, we didn't have like regular eating schedules or whatever. And so sometimes you're just kind of eating what's in front of you. And I'm like, I really miss getting to choose whether that's a healthy breakfast or not, or really getting to choose. So it just, anytime you don't have something, all of a sudden we have a lot more gratitude towards choice, choice of movement, choice of food. And if we could just start in that spot versus whine about having to be in that spot. No, I get to, I get to eat healthier. I get to move because my body is allowing it and hallelujah, you know? So that's where I go with wine. I, I love that. And I, I, I'm going to botch the quote, but you know, there's that, that quote, if, if everybody's problems were thrown into a pile mm -hmm. and you walked in and saw everybody else's problems, you'd most likely grab yours back and mm -hmm. run. Yeah. And it's kind of what you're talking about there, Lindsay, is it's, you know, until we, we complain about things because we do, because there are normal things, and the moment we don't have those, we realize those are the things that are actually okay. I want those things and I'm, I'm fine with those. And having, yeah. like you said, that gratitude, perfect word, you know, pay attention and really be self-aware as to what you have. And I, I don't want to go the, well, it couldn't be so much worse direction because that has all kinds of connotations. It's not, mm -hmm. I, we don't need to, that's, I don't think that's a, a terribly productive place to go most right. of the time. Right. Um, so yeah, realize what you have and that you do get to do it. And, and you know, I, as, as silly as it sounds, and this is something I'll, I'll tell clients a lot when, when somebody's struggling with, you know, they have days where maybe because they're so stressed, they're, they're having stomach issues, they're having constant headaches, they're having, you know, memory lapses, right? All of those things can come from massive stress. And so what often I'll, I'll remind them is, Every time we talk about those things and how you're feeling bad, notice that we never talk and you say, you know what, today I'm actually feeling really good. Mm -hmm. So don't just notice or be aware of when we're feeling bad because that's usually where we start thinking about what we're feeling. When you have a day, start catching yourself feeling good. Start mm -hmm. catching yourself feeling okay. Yeah. Because if you, if you don't, it's like the old catch me doing something right. Don't just always catch me doing something wrong approach. Yes. Start to pay attention oh. to days where there isn't anything to complain about. There's nothing feeling wise that's, that's bringing you down or impacting you in any way and go, Hey, I just noticed I kind of feel good today. Sit with that and know that you're not always feeling the stuff that we overwhelm ourselves with and, and convince ourselves we feel that way all the time. No, we don't. No, we don't. So please catch yourself feeling okay sometimes. Right. You don't feel great. I feel okay today. That's awesome. Yeah, check. Grasp onto that. Yes. Yes, I feel like you need to sign us out here with a, a little talk on wellness before we leave our W talk. <laughs> yeah, you know, wellness is probably the the biggie that came to my mind with W. And I'm like, well, is that kind of too generic? Because wellness has become such a buzzword in just the last yeah. several years, right? But but it's 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 in our vernacular as a buzzword for a reason, right? It's it's true. Mental wellness, physical wellness, when you can figure out and find ways that make you feel good, make you feel healthy, give your brain and your body what they need amazing things happen. And you you can, even on the days you don't feel good, when you understand 
how to bring wellness into your life when you need it mentally or physically, you can get yourself back to where you need to be more quickly. You can stay in that space a bit longer. And I, I always think it's, it's sort of like energy. It's like confidence. It's like a lot of these other things we talk about. It's even like stress. I think it's also contagious sometimes mm -hmm. when you bring you as, as somebody who, I don't know what the word is, as somebody who simply kind of lives a little bit in wellness, the wellness space, you, you, people pay attention and, and people see that. And you sometimes give other people permission to start exploring that on their own, because I'm going to go back to, to whining for a moment. You know, it's so easy to find the times we don't feel well and get stuck there. But, you know, regardless of what you're talking about, whether it's how do I get a little less stressed? That's, that's a component of wellness. How do I eat a little bit better? That's a component of wellness. How do I, how do I calm my mind a little so it's not constantly racing? That's a component of wellness. Um, talking to people, right? Whether it's friends, whether it's the dog, whether it's, you know, being able to express things, whether it's a counselor or a therapist, talking to other human beings and letting things out instead of holding on to things. Those are all components of wellness. There are so, so many of them. And I, I know you are much more well-versed in the wellness space than I. I'm going to just leave this as a find ways. It doesn't have to look one way. Find like the clothes we started with. Find things that work for you. Yeah. And then just do those little things consistently and you'll end up having wonderful outcomes and wonderful results. The key is little things done consistently have a big, big impact on your wellness. Yes. Yes. And that it's so individualized, yeah. right? That everyone's wellness would look slightly different to them. Like, yes, we all have a general big wellness that we're fighting for, but um, the only thing that I'm going to say on that, I think you summarized that beautifully, Robin. And like we said, this could be like 20 sessions worth, but um, wellness by the term, and this is interesting. I have a podcast interview after Robin and I are done and it's an integrative doctor and literally on my, my bio sheet over here, wellness, um, is simply the lack of disease. Like just mm. if one's a bit or one not having disease means that they're well. So where I think we need to be a little careful with that is that just being well, isn't enough, you know, mm. like the, there's that next level of just because we don't have disease doesn't mean that there's like this vitality, this healthiness going on. And that's what we're fighting for is not just, I think some people get in this, I'm just fighting for not getting sick. Mm. When, if you flip that a little bit and think more, that's not that motivating. Now we're just like always fighting out of fear. I don't want to get cancer. I don't want to get diabetes. I don't want to, you know, so I, I have to do these things that make me well. Well, guess what? If we take that fear out of it and say, I'm fighting to, to be my best self, to thrive, then we'd still be eating healthy. We'd still be drinking our water. We'd still be walking because it makes us feel good. We're living in our best wellness. So, okay. I could go on. Love I'm going to be done. <laughs> Robin and I, <laughs> to close out. All right, Robin, where can everybody find you? Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. I am there pretty much daily. You can follow me. I do post tips, little videos, articles, all kinds of things all the time. Uh, you can also get me at my, uh, or you can reach out to me, not just follow. Feel free to connect if I can be of help or value professionally to you. And my website, robinjsacks.com has lots of free articles, free videos, ways to work with me, different speaking topics, things like that. How about you, Lindsay? Yes. Uh, you can head over to my website, which is healthaccountabilitycoach.com. And there's a contact me if you just have questions, need referrals, anything like that. I live on my podcast weekly called Direction, Not Perfection. And I'm starting to do a little more. I always do interviews, but I'm doing a little more solo episodes uh, in this new year, a little more coaching so people can get the feel of that. So nice. yes, thank you for that. joining us today. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. And we will see you. Uh, I think we have a double episode coming up. I think we have like next week, we have what? WX? We have X. So we need to start thinking of X's. Right we do. <laughs> and then I think we've got YZ back to back. And then middle yeah. of December, we have completed our task, our mission for the year. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's so hopefully cool. you join us, Lindsay. Thank you for everything. I always appreciate you and the conversations you have. And you I'll talk too. to you next week.
All right. Sounds good. Bye. <laughs>